and check Twitch. Turn off my jams. It says offline. I don't necessarily believe it's offline, so I'm gonna refresh again. I usually get an email like 10 seconds after we start that we're live. And every single time I get freaked out by it. It says we're live. I see us. I also see us. I'm gonna do a quick audio check. Yep. We're good. Okay. So let me close this so we don't go crazy. Okay, 264. That's our episode number. Okay, you ready? Yep. All right. <clears throat> okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 264 here on the Security Podcast on the In30 Network. My name's Hiam. Tom is somewhere. But right we here. agree that he's still there. Okay. So as we talk as about I'm about to say this, I'm sure get an email that Twitch is live. Um, anyway, so like we said, the last couple of weeks, we had not that much news. And then all of a sudden, all the news, all the news, all the news. We can do two shows just on the news that we have. But when feast comes famine, so we're going to split them up. We'll do two shows. Uh we will talk about re-implementing an API, which you should never re-implement an API. There was a shirt. It said that. Don't re-implement an API. I mean, now you I do that now, all day long. I, mean, I don't. So we'll talk about that next week. That's a next week topic. Anyway, this week we have lots of breaches. Let's first start off, uh, I guess, with uh, the big one. 533 million people had their Facebook information uh, stolen. Um, I mean, I knew this was going to happen. This had to happen. This hasn't happened in the past, but it's a thing. It happened. Now, the question is, did Facebook, and I'm going to ask this to Tom, did Facebook do the right thing? It's an easy one. Um, yes. Yes and no. Kind of. Uh, so Facebook did say, yeah, we're, we're not going to tell 533 million people that Facebook uh, leaked their information, which, um, yeah, that's not it's not the right thing to do. When your information's leaked, you should probably know about it. Uh, that said, if every single company told us every single time all of our information got leaked, which they should and in some places are required to do by law, uh, we just have a never ending deluge of emails saying that your information was lost, stolen, hacked and uh, transmitted to literally everyone, whether they purchased it or not. I mean, so the, the company line, which I love, was from, was, hey, this information is two years old. Uh, w what's this big deal? It's like two years ago and people are responding, my phone number didn't change from two years ago. Uh, my name didn't really change from two years ago. My email address probably didn't change from two years ago. My gender, my birthday, all the my marital status didn't really change. Um, it's one. I mean, we keep on saying it. If that's all they got, okay. I mean, it's not great. I'm not happy about this. I I did check. The, I did check. Uh, my information is there. It's. I just. I knew it would happen. I, I wish Facebook would have been a little more upfront about it because they are one of those data brokers who do uh, single sign-ons that you can use OAuth with, and they're supposed to keep that information as tight-lipped. Uh, and they lost it. I always assume, again, we keep on talking about this all the time. What you put on Facebook is public no matter what you think it is. Okay, people can screenshot it. Data can leak. Uh, people are running ads against it. It's, it's public information. So the fact that it leaked, I'm upset about. I'm I'm not like devastated. Like, okay, they have my phone. They have my Google voice phone number. Like it's at the end of the world. Um, however, the fact that they won't own up to, yeah, something happened or try to figure it out that does really bother me more. But then again, this is Facebook. This is not like, this is not like anything new. This is almost like you should have, you shouldn't have a phone number. This is like victim blaming at some level. So... 
Yeah, I, if, if there's one thing that, that we can look at and take away from this, uh, it's the fact that we've been trying to get in touch with you about your vehicle's extended warranty. Uh, they call it school. They called my room at school. So I'm sitting there teaching virtually and the phone rings. And I, I don't know who it is. And apparently the phone system at school, the VoIP system has uh, two different rings. One's internal, one's external. I never knew that was a thing, but apparently it is. So I'm like, oh, so the phone's ringing. That's kind of cool. We would like to, we would like to talk to you about your extended warranty. My, 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 my response is always, I don't drive. I mean, it doesn't stop them, but. Um, I actually, I, I started, I started doing something recently. Uh, if I'm not like in a meeting, if I'm not like programming, if I'm not super busy, I'll actually answer those calls and, and talk to people. Now, the frontline workers, they don't care. They get berated all day long. They just hang up on you. It, it doesn't matter. Um, so what I'll do is I'll be really nice to the frontline workers and get transferred to the next person in line. Um, and I actually did get a hold of somebody. Um, and I, I went through the thing. I said, yeah, well, my car's been having this issue and this thing. And man, I'm really hoping your, your insurance could help me out with this. Um, how much would it cost? And, uh, and can I, you know, cash this in? And the person got really offended. They're like, this is insurance. What kind of insurance do you know that's going to take care of a problem that already exists, man? Have you ever heard of the phrase pre-existing condition? And I'm like, yeah, but I mean, you know, let's act like that kind of that conversation never happened. How much would it cost me to get on this plan? Uh, and the guy hung up. <laughs> I haven't gotten another call about it. Uh, I don't know if they took me off the list, but like apparently you can waste enough of their time uh, that they'll leave you alone. Now, I'm not guaranteeing that this works, but so far I haven't gotten another call. Um, I don't know. It <clears throat> might be worth a shot if you've got some time to burn. Uh, and, and think you of it this way. If you waste a scammer's time, it's time that they don't have to you know burn anybody else. <laughs> My question is, do you think this is a single system? Do you think they have one phone number? So you got through to the second line and then they stopped calling you. Do you think this is, uh, they have one database that they're calling? Or do you think it's many of them? You know, I don't actually know. Um, I don't want to speculate. Um, I mean, but that's what we do here is we speculate. Yeah. So if I had to guess, yeah, I'd think it was one system because they always call. They've always got the, the same card that I got rid of years and years ago. Like, I haven't had this thing in my possession since I lived in Ohio. Like, oh, but but this call and this, like, 1994 Dodge Accent, do you really want that covered? And, yeah, you are bet, you bet I do. Unfortunately, it tragically burned down, like, a decade ago. So, uh. I mean... I would like to know how much they would charge you to insure a 1994 Dodge. <laughs> I I would frankly love to bring that car back. Like, don't get me wrong. It was a screaming metal death trap and quite literally burned to the ground, which is why I got a new car. Uh, but, uh, man, I do kind of miss it sometimes. I had the windows that rolled down and everything. It was great. So... So the problem with all of this is, so I was trying to convince Tom to do a show on what does this mean now? Because again, we talk about this all the time. It's like you said, we're tired of talking about breaches and everything else. First, 533 million Facebook people is a significant portion of the number of people. I don't know how many, I, I don't know if Facebook crossed the 2 billion mark yet, but there are definitely over a billion and 533, which by the way, does include Mark Zuckerberg. I mean, that, that, that is key there. It does include him. So you can get that information. Um, okay. It's your email, uh, your name, your birthday. It's all the personal identifiable information that we already have. Um, so I'm, we're going to post a link from Krebs on security. Basically it's saying, be ready for not necessarily, it's going to be more spam. You're going to get more spam. You're going to get more insurance calls. Uh, the big one that I keep on f seeing are SIM swapping attacks. So they they now have your phone number. Uh, so the, the the advice out of all of this is, if anything, is to make sure you're uh, with your mobile carrier that that it's not the last four of your social. Try and do it. You need some sort of second factor authentication. I don't know what that is, but say no changes to my account. Um, if you want to change, I need 
don't ask for the social. I need something else. There has to, I know they all, all four of the carriers do it or the three of the carriers, but you have to call and you have to make sure that they're not going to be like, oh, if the person's crying, we'll give it to you. Make sure that they actually do it. Um, because I, I have a feeling that's going to go. But again, you personally, I feel like it's just going to be more spam. If you're a famous person, that that I would wonder. Yeah, and if if you are using SMS two factor authentication, I know some sites don't really give you the option. I know of several sites that have never given me the option. They just text me, and there's no other two factor. Like that's that's the option. It's that or nothing. Uh, but if you do have the ability to switch that to like you know Google Authenticator slash Authy slash whatever TOTP you know provider you use. Um, I would, I would do that if you have the ability to use a Yuba key or, uh, like a FIDO key or some kind of like one touch hardware authenticator, that's going to be vastly preferred over anything else. So I don't know, look around. Um, but hopefully, uh, if the thing you're using SMS authentication for, uh, you know, if, if there aren't any options, hopefully it's not too important. Uh, and hopefully well, you're not Facebook too famous. Does have. Facebook does have um, a YubiKey support, so you can absolutely do that. They are good with that. Same with Instagram, same, I guess, uh, with all that. The problem is it's the weakest link. So so I have two-factor on. I have the, the code, but it's one of those, oh, you don't have your key? Let's try a different way. And the problem is you don't want that different way to be all the way at the bottom of, like, let's guess the security questions. Yeah. So, so they... And they do have unrecognized logins. The Facebook security team, so as much is different than the Facebook everything else team. Same with Google. The Google security team and the Google everything else are two different groups. So for the most part, Facebook does take the security. Because again, remember, Facebook wants to make the money. If they're giving data away and they're not making money, they're doing wrong. So take it from the purely like straight up unadulterated capitalism. We don't want you hacking us because we want to sell you that stuff. Uh, look at it that way. Uh, so yes, Facebook does have all of that. They do make sure they do send emails. They do all this. So the other thing is credential stuffing, meaning that they have this database they're going to put this into other ones. So I don't know if they actually got the username and passwords. I don't believe so. I'm, I'm looking here at the, the Krebs yeah. post and it looks like yeah, name, number, uh, email addresses, gender, occupation, city, yeah. country, marital status. Uh, yeah, I don't yeah. think they have. I, I don't, and again, Facebook, I know uh, salted hashes and everything else. So they have a mm -hmm. hash. They would have to go back and everything else. So again, the problem is, is that Facebook didn't come out and say, I mean, they did say two years ago, something happened, but they didn't do anything. I didn't get my free one year uh, nonsense reports. I, I didn't get a, uh, you should change your password. Oh yeah, some data has been compromised and now we're finding out how much and everything else. And it's one of those, I know we can't do anything about it, but tell us, like have a little banner that says, it says maybe you should change your password. I mean, phone numbers are hard to switch and I'm annoyed now. So I got a new uh, line of service, I don't know, a few, a few months ago. And it's, and I didn't realize because my, all our cell phones are so old is that they, de, they, as they deregistered numbers, they just give you another deregistered number. So you're still getting the spam for the old person. And apparently this is a thing. As you add a line, they don't have any more phone numbers, so they start giving you phone numbers of decommissioned lines of people who didn't pay or whatever it is. So now you're getting call, you're getting debt collectors or more spam or everything else. And and it's one of those, why can't I start fresh? And the answer is there's no more phone numbers. We need yeah. to add another digit or something. Yeah, or, or just give everybody a UUID, right? Just give them a UUID, figure out some way to, to port that back to something human readable and call it done. Um, I like I, with a lot of these systems, like we, we've seen the same thing with email, right? The telephone system is a great example where we built it up enough to work. And that's it. Because, you know, honestly, back when these systems were created, People were thinking of attackers and spams and international markets and and stuff like that. Like there's 
there's a lot of thought that goes into design today around scaling and how to operate at scale and protection and, uh, you know, curtailing abuse and stuff like that. But back in the day, it was a miracle that it even worked, that the networks even could talk to each other. Uh, so once it was good enough to, to ship, it just went out. Uh, now we're kind of all paying the price for, uh, for that um it's it's the classic unknown unknowns problem right like i i don't blame alexander graham bell for for me getting getting a bunch of phone call spam uh it literally wasn't ever a thought that occurred to anybody is how could this system be abused um and so now we're left with kind of suboptimal things that due to their decentralized nature uh which will you know i, I know we're going to mention signal we're going to wait for things to shake out there uh, that'll probably be next week. But, um, you know, uh, in relation to Signal, right, we have all these decentralized systems, but none of them can be updated or changed, uh, at least not as fast as they should be, because everyone's got to grow up together uh, and be on the same version and have the same compatibility guarantees. I mean, for the same reason we've we've harped on SMS for year, for decades now, uh, there's just nothing else. It's... I don't remember my Skype username. I don't remember my Venmo username, but I do remember my phone number. And that's unfortunately the lowest common denominator that people are still going with. So that's what that is. Again, uh, uh, Tony Hunt, Troy Hunt put in, I have been pwned. Uh, there's a Facebook thing updater now. So you can check it to see if you are one of the people who had your thing stolen. I guess my rec our recommendation is at this point, change your password. Um, if you have any other high targeted accounts with that password, you may want to change it too, or as well, and just be on the lookout for any, you're going to get more spam, but make sure you're, you're being vigilant and hopefully nobody's resetting things. That's always the one that you want to look for. Hey, we noticed this on this weird login. Is this you? You may want to just keep an eye on that for the next, I yeah. don't know, a couple months. Yeah. <sighs> so. Again, that's it's as useful as information as we can give you because this happened two years ago, but it's still valid now. This this reminds me of the LinkedIn hacks from I don't know ten years ago, where they they got more information four years later or three years later because people just didn't do anything. So yeah, that that's that's their first uh, big news. The second one is Ubiquity. So I've been liking Ubiquity stuff. They had not just a hack, but a really bad not they lost a lot of data and the problem is is that the problem is i'm trying to think of the best way to put it the problem is is that they didn't really tell anybody but it's worse than that so so i got a dream machine in in the in what's it called during the pandemic so i was telling tom hey tom i need to burn i have some money i want to burn it and we decided let's get the dream machine because i'm old and busted now i have kids i need things to work BF Sense was working, but it wasn't working. Like, if you want to sit there with Linux and you want to run your commands and and you don't have kids and you can have not have internet for a couple of hours and this and that, like any other Linux system, that that's what you want. I mean, PF Sense did it all. Like, I could do everything, but Ubiquity made it pretty, and I like pretty. I'm at the point now where I like pretty, so I want things to just work. And so I had some money. I bought the dream machine and I hook it up and it's like, I'm looking at it. It's like, okay, connect to this website so we could remote admin to your router. I'm like, but I'm right here. No, this is the new way of doing it. I'm like, okay, there are, there are security. There are, there, they're a routing technology company and they deal with a lot of fortune 500. They're the second to Cisco. Maybe we should may, I, 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 I kind of believe them. Well, they lost that data and not only did they lose it they didn't tell anybody because they're afraid to stop like all the bad things so ubiquity now is in hot water i mean so i again same thing change your password the problem is is that unlike facebook they could get into your system now again if you're yeah. not a target they're not going to worry about it but they can get into your system which is the problem 
Yeah, so apparently Ubiquity had, uh, this is this is according to the whistleblower, and there's uh, another great Krebs on security article we'll link here, uh, but apparently, uh, according to the whistleblower, Ubiquity had negligent logging, so no access logging of their databases, so they couldn't prove or disprove what the attackers accessed, um, but they uh, the attackers apparently knew their way around Ubiquity's tech stack really, really, really well. Uh, and legal overrode requ uh, uh, repeated requests uh, to force rotation of all customer credentials. Um, so yeah, the attackers had access to all of your stuff. Um, like if, if you were hooked to Ubiquity's cloud, if, if you were using their management at all, um, which yeah, thankfully I wasn't. My my access point has been isolated. Like I set it up and I updated occasionally, uh, but frankly I just don't run the controller. I've got a single access point and it's just going to sit there doing its thing. Um, but yeah, if you had a, like a, a managed router, a switch, a dream machine, uh, access points, uh, yeah, all that stuff, yeah, the attacker potentially had access to your network uh and maybe maybe even uh like permanent access uh, apparently in this breach the ability to forge single sign-on tokens uh was present uh like the attackers could actually move through all of ubiquity's customer networks thanks to uh the data they stole and the way they got in like this is Honestly, one of the most serious breaches I have seen in a very long time. And frankly, it's enough to convince me to not buy Ubiquity hardware anymore. Not only did Ubiquity, uh, you know, stomp all over uh, releasing this information, but it took a, an internal whistleblower to come out and say this is a problem. And legal was quashing, uh, you know, damage mitigation. Um, this is enough to sink the company's reputation for me. Uh, and yeah, that, that Ubiquity access point over there. It's the last piece of ubiquity gear I'm buying. I don't know who else I'm going to. Um, hell, I might just I might just build my own access point with BSD. But um, yeah, uh, this is this is awful. Uh, it is truly outlandish. I mean, <clears throat> I'm not going. I'm not going that tinfoil hat. Like I agree with you. This is really bad. Um, I will say that their 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 product. <laughs> I don't want to go, I don't want to, all this praise that, oh, it's really easy to figure out. They do change their UI so much. And it's like, no, no, I don't want my UI to change. I want things to work. So if you're going to put out features, put out features, be BSD about it. Put out features really slow. Tell people features are coming. Don't just change stuff up. Uh, for me, it's, a, it's one of those things I get to play around with and I can see it. Uh, for you, you know you you know your way around Linux enough that you can just command line everything. I wanted a little more ease, and with all the IoT stuff that I do have, I'm going to segment it, and it's doing a lot of good stuff. So I upgraded it. I think for three hundred dollars, it's an, a fantastic the Dream Machine, a fantastic router with everything. But again, it's it's one of those if you're running a business with real things, this is a problem. And again. Maybe this is why you pay the Cisco tax and you say, Cisco didn't have this problem. Uh, and if Cisco, you're hoping that if Cisco had this problem, it would be, it would be, it would be handled a lot differently. To not tell people about a breach is worse than having it at all. And that, and that's the problem. Um, yeah. So again, it's of, one of those. Yeah. As of right now, the, the stock is still depressed uh, over $100 at this point. Um, like it's pretty, pretty shocking. Uh, they, they had a major, major slip and frankly, unless they change some significant things, I, I don't see this getting a whole lot of, a whole lot better. Uh, people on Hacker News and Reddit were saying, you know, oh, we're, we're going to different companies. There's a bunch of like crowdsourced figuring out what the, what the best providers are for new network gear. Um, yeah, this is, this is awful. So it's, it's, look, I've had, people are asking what to buy. Any of the mesh networks at this point, a lot of the routers at this point, if you just want a commercial router off the shelf, you're probably fine. Um, like you said, those three access points, they're dumb access points at this point. They're just hooked up to your Linux box and, and they work. It's one of those for a hundred bucks. They were really good. You put a couple of them, but 
if you're buying two of them, you might as well look at Eero or uh, the, uh, whatever the all the companies now have some sort of mesh offering and and go from yeah, there. But there's like a million and a half like prosumer network gear uh, company is out there. So uh, pick one. Um, like I, Cisco is a standby, but people moved from Cisco to Ubiquity in a lot of places because uh, Cisco charges outlandish prices uh, for a support contract so you can continue to get updates. Hey, you want those nice security patches? Well, you're going to have to fork over some money, um, which in retrospect, not the worst thing in the world requiring uh, money, but like at the prices Cisco charges, no, I'm, I'm good with not doing that. And look, I had, I, to, ran... I had to buy Cisco gear for, for previous businesses I worked at, and it was never a fun conversation to have with finance. Well, I mean, I yeah, it's it's one of those it's one of those security things. How much is it gonna cost? A million dollars? Is it gonna protect it? What what features can we tell our customers other than more security? Oh, it's gonna make them logging in harder? No, 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 no. We we don't do that. It's it's one of those type of things that no one wants to deal with, but it's it's one of those things that uh, yeah you you need to start worrying about and and like as we get more and more IoT devices as we get more and more things on our phone that we have to worry about you want that segmentation but I think I really think it's it's one of those you could pick up any of the commercial ones I've set people up with Eros and there everyone ha nobody has come back and said this is a terrible uh, piece of hardware everyone's come back and said it just works. And that's what I want. I mean, if if you're at the level where you're more than that, then you know what? You can get a PF Sense box, and it's not. It, it wasn't hard to configure. I just wanted to learn more about it, and so, and we were in pandemic, and I needed something to do, and I was like, hmm, if I get everything, so we did that. Um, like, I mean, we didn't have this discussion yet, but I need to reduce my IoT stuff to single apps. I want. I have a, a folder on my phone called. IOT, IOT apps. And I want to start condensing it. So I have one thing going and it's becoming harder than it seems because I don't want to throw out hardware and I don't want to pick the wrong thing. I mean, that's always the problem. It's, I have this type of camera with this type of doorbell. And if I get that type of camera's doorbell, I have to pay monthly, which I don't have to do. And so it's like, okay, I have another app on my phone. That's okay. But you put them all on a different network and you put them on a different network. Okay, do whatever you want because you're on a different network. All these things now compared to a few years ago, instead of looking internally, they're going to a central server and coming back. So as long as you segment it off and all these things will do it. I put all my stuff on the guest network. You should be reasonably safe. Um, that's what I have. Yeah, I, I know we had, we had an, another story. We've got like three and a half minutes. Do you think we could spin run it? Um, just, uh, yeah, because we're going to speculate a lot of this. Yeah. So, okay. Um, you know what? I'm going to say we'll we'll give a teaser for the signal stuff, which we're going to talk about next week. Right. I want to give that a little bit of a little bit of time to figure itself okay. out. It's still really fresh. Um, and next week we will talk about uh, screwdrivers and how those relate to Google versus Oracle in the Supreme Court. Um, if you haven't seen the news, Google did win against Oracle, and it turns out that, yes, copying API interfaces uh, is expressly legal from the Supreme Court. Uh, it's basically uh, one of the best decisions uh, that I have ever seen. It's, it's fantastic and, frankly, has saved uh, computer science from just the worst kind of copyright nonsense, just awful, awful fights. Um, so yeah, that's, it's great news. We'll talk about let's, it more let's next tease week. with this. Do you feel, are you happier that the Supreme court allowed this or that Oracle lost? Uh, no, no, I am extremely happy. The Supreme court allowed this. Okay. The fact that Oracle lost is a cherry on top for me. I'm never sad when Oracle loses. Let me put it that way. But but if Oracle had won this fight, basically what it means is that anybody, anyone making any kind of app whatsoever would need to obtain express permission from the company uh, saying, hey, hey, Twitter, there's this other programming language that you don't support through your official like SDKs or APIs, the stuff you guys put out. Could, 
could I please make something for like Rust, Go, Kotlin, what, whatever, right? Pick, pick your poison. And the company would have to say yes or no, because otherwise you could be sued for copying their API by making something a little bit more compatible or something that fits your use case. Um, it would basically turn uh, computer science into the RIAA or the MPAA or the other like, you know, copyright goons that run around bullying school children for uh, singing things on the playground that are a little, little too close to, to the reality of, you know, what the well, song let's save that for is. next week. But, but yes, the Supreme Court, this is breaking, uh, let people do their analyses. But basically, the Supreme Court did rule that now I'm hoping this is the final one, because, because we'll talk next week that Google won, then Oracle won, then Google won again, then Oracle, then Google and Google and Google and finally Google. So this has been going back and forth probably for a decade at this point. So hopefully we have more important information and some and some more feedback. Uh, with that said, we got one, we got 30 seconds left. So this is a good time to plug all this. Join the Signal group. Okay, so yes, if there's no news that's willing to talk about live on the show, we do have a Signal group where you can talk about anything else. And and even if it tangentially relates to security. So uh, find us there and do that. Um, and I guess we will see you next week. Yeah, Unless next week else. we're talking about Signal. We're talking about mobile coin payments inside of Signal uh, and Google versus Oracle with screwdrivers. Uh, and yeah, I think I think that's it so far. Well, there okay. might be more news. Well, let's hope. Anyway, have a good night, everybody. Bye. Okay. 3007. Yes, you're right. We should that was a good call to stop it there. Let me uh let me shut 64. off our recording.